Today is, of course, St Andrew's Day, and with me to discuss this special day for Scotland is broadcaster Scotty McClue. How are you today, Scotty, and how is Scotland? Oh, very well, Stacey. A very, very snowy Scotland this morning, of course. I've just arrived for work about three hours late. Terrific deep snow, about two feet of it in some occasions, and of course it's uh, holding up the whole of central Scotland. But uh, it's uh, a more important day because it's the feast day of St Andrew, the 30th of November, the patron saint of Scotland, and uh, this is Scotland's official national day when we fly our national flag, the saltire, with the blue background and the white cross. Now, um, I don't know if you know about the background or your listeners know about the background to the flag, but uh, it was actually a legend about a battle in Athol Stainford in East Lothian in the east of Scotland, or Ale Stainford, and the night before the battle, King Ingus vowed that uh, if he was granted victory, he would appoint St Andrew as the patron saint of Scotland, and the legend states that he actually engaged in prayer on the eve of the battle, and in the morning they looked up and there was the blue sky with a white diagonal cross. And uh, that was the start of the Saltire flag. And, of course, St Andrew's diagonal cross was because St Andrew wanted to be crucified on that cross rather than be crucified on the same cross as Jesus Christ, his Lord and Master. So it's essentially a Christian festival, St Andrew's Day. And St Andrew became the patron saint of Scotland around the middle of the 10th century, about 950 AD. But he's also the patron saint of many other parts of the world as well. St Andrew's well known in the Ukraine, in Russia and Romania, Athens in Greece, Amalfi, Italy, and also in Portugal. So he's managed to get himself about, and the St Andrew's flags can be seen in the flag, the blue in the flag of Australia, New Zealand, and Nova Scotia. So the Saltire Cross, and of course, Scotland has got a national party in government at the moment. We have our own assembly in Scotland, and our government is the Scottish National Party. They are in power at the moment. Of course, they are very keen that the Saltire flag finds its feet. But uh, from going, essentially, from going from a Christian festival, St Andrew's Day is a day of great celebration. Lots of dancing, lots of singing, lots of evenings out, lots of eating, of course, things that the Scots do terribly well. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there are many, many Scots, Stacey, or Scots descendants in the Falkland Islands and the South Atlantic. Yeah, no, there's uh, quite a few Scots uh, down here, and um, I'm I'm sure you'd encourage them to to celebrate today as well. Yes, absolutely. The uh, celebration of music is very much with the fiddle and the bagpipe, but the fiddle, the violin, is the original instrument of Scotland going back to the 15th century. And uh, not long after um, Andrew's bones were taken to St Andrews. Of course, St Andrews in the east coast of Scotland where Prince William uh, went to university recently uh, and of course engaged to Kate Middleton now. That's the big news over in this part of the world. In fact, the big news throughout the world. But a celebration of St Andrew. St Andrews also the home of golf, which uh, the saint himself wouldn't play because that didn't come in until the 1400s. But uh, there will be dancing, there will be singing, Scottish music and of course the food um, normally reserved for Burns Night, uh, the, the birth of uh, Rabbi Burns on the 25th of January. Uh, but uh, there's always good food eaten in St Andrew's Night, good warming food, Scotch broth, that may be haggis, neeps and tatties with the potatoes and the turnips there. But anything essentially that is an excuse to have a little bit of whiskey. So there'll be a drop of single and uh, um, other blended whiskies being taken tonight as well in celebration. That relaxes people and um, it brings in the uh, the fertility rites. And of course, if you go right back to the history, you'll find that uh, in parts of Germany, Austria, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland and Romania, there are still superstitions that believe that the night before St. Andrew's Day, St. Andrew's Eve, is especially suitable for magic that reveals a young woman's future husband or that binds her future husband to her. So all in all, a day for celebration, Stacey. Yes, so the the bad weather over there isn't dampening people's spirits? Well, it is obviously very threatening, but I really think that it would be very, very unfair of me to lecture the good people of the Falkland Islands about weather systems. (laughs) 
So I don't think we can be seen as moaners and whingers. I think we should be seen as people who have a humility, hopefully, in the way that St. Andrew had his humility, not wishing to be crucified on a cross similar to his Lord and Master. Yeah, well, it's a very sunny uh, summer's day here, so uh, maybe that'll make you a bit jealous over there. <laughs> oh, you lucky things, yes. I'm absolutely green with it, you know. I'm heading for the Falkland Islands as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks a lot for um, talking to me today, Scotty, about, uh, about St Andrew's Day. Stacey, lovely to talk to you. God bless and um, great wishes to everybody in the Falklands and to all your listeners this morning. Happy breakfast time, I say, and happy St Andrew's Day.